opportunity to go uh, on a little pilgrimage, kind of vacation to, to uh, Ireland and to uh, Italy. And I went to Assisi and Rome while I was in Italy. And one of the most amazing places I've ever been is Assisi. I don't know if anybody here has ever been to Assisi. Uh, it's, it's beautiful there. It's like a medieval town, right? Uh, and it still has a very medieval feel to it. Um, it's, it's kind of funny. Because right there, St. Francis of Assisi, right? He's from there. Francis, who I don't know how much, I didn't know too much about St. Francis before I went on this trip. And I'm still no expert or scholar on Francis, but I had an interesting uh, encounter with his life. Uh, I was amazed. And why would he do the things that he did? Right? You really feel like you're in the footsteps of Francis when you're there. Francis, who was, uh, he died in 1226, and they say that he's the most Christ-like man who's ever lived. That's, that was what his reputation was. And his love was poverty. That's his gift. That's what he offered to the church. He embraced poverty. He became a beggar. Complete. Like, wanted to have nothing, no shoes, one tunic to cover him, uh, only because it was really a distraction if he didn't have that. <laughs> but he wouldn't even have that if they didn't make him. It, what, he throwing himself in thorn bushes, kissing lepers. Why would he do these sorts of things? Why would he embrace poverty so much? And being there in this town really provokes this question, what was different about this man? Why was he this way? And I could not for the four days I was there, it's just kind of be amazed. And really, it became clear to me when I went to visit the tomb of St. Clair, one of his friends, Clair. And as you're approaching her tomb, there's quotes on the wall from Francis, from the bishop at the time, from Clare herself. And it kind of really builds up to this dramatic moment of seeing Clare's tomb laid out there. And it becomes very clear to me that the reason he loved poverty, the reason she followed him in the way of poverty, was not because of some concern for the poor as a nameless, faceless group, not because of political ideology, not because of a suspicion of the good things that God has created, as if somehow <coughs> enjoying things is bad. No, none of that had anything to do with why Francis loved poverty. He loved poverty because of Christ. He loved poverty because he encountered Jesus Christ. And he talks frequently about the poor Christ. Embrace poverty totally to follow the poor Christ. That's what he told Claire. And this was amazing to me. Christ, the risen one, the all-powerful God-made man, encountered as poor. A poor man. It's because of the poverty of someone that he met, the God who loves him, that Francis chose this way of life. And it caused him to relate to things in a different way. It caused him to understand himself and his own desires in a different way, in a truer way. We heard in the second reading today about the poverty of Christ, the one who made himself poor, although he was rich. That's fascinating to me. He chose poverty. He chose to empty himself. He chose to become weak, vulnerable, risky, humanity, fragile, subject to dying. He chose to enter into that. The Lord of life, the author of life, embraced our limitation, embraced the thing that makes us so fragile. He embraced that. He became poor for our sake. When God wanted to reveal his love to us, he did it as a poor man. And this shows us that God embraces our poverty. He's not scandalized by our fragility. He's not repulsed by the things that make us weak and poor. And somehow, very mysteriously, he's attracted to it. He's drawn to those places in our lives, not where we have it most together, but where we're a total mess. That's where he's drawn to us. It's amazing. And so another incident from Francis's life that, that strikes me so powerfully that I could not find represented in art anywhere. I looked at all the frescoes, right, the, the paintings on the walls and the ceilings, and there's lots of Francis preaching to the birds, Francis with the stigmata, but the event in his 
life that seems to me to really have changed him was the day he embraced a leper. A leper was gross, repulsive, disgusting, dangerous to be near him. Maybe cursed by God. Francis, something welled up inside of him and he embraced this leper and kissed him. And from that moment on, Francis' life was not the same. And the thing that made this possible was that Francis had experienced the love of God, who embraced Francis in his poverty, embraced the things that the world sees as repulsive about, about us, about him, like our weakness. Maybe it's moral weakness, maybe it's a sadness, maybe it's um, all the things that, all the, that we feel poor, like where we really experience our limitation. That's right where God embraces us. That's right where he comes to meet us and sets us free to love others in the same way. That's what made it possible for Francis to do that, that he was certain of the way that he could love by the God who makes him. This is so important. I see it so much in this story of Francis and the leper, that Christ is not scandalized by our poverty, our weakness, our fragility, our limitations are not an obstacle for him and his love. In the Gospel today, we see Jesus confronting death, right? The, the poorest of poverty that we experience as human beings, the ultimate poverty. We heard in the first reading that we are made imperishable in the image of the divine nature. We're made for eternal life. And we can't help the fact that our life slips away from us and sometimes is violently ripped away from us. Right? We die, we face mortality, every single one of us dies. And we can't help it. And we see in, this, in the Gospel today, this man whose daughter has died. He comes to Christ as a beggar, falling at his feet. The facts of his life, this experience of his daughter's death, makes him beg makes him fall on his knees and go to the one who he has a suspicion might have something to do with the source of life. We need to live forever. We feel it in ourselves. We need forever. We're still heartbroken when somebody dies. This happens to us. Our hearts demand forever. And the reality that life slips away from us turns us into beggars. And in the midst of all of this, Christ, the Son of God, shows up as a beggar himself, as a poor man, understanding what it is to beg. And he says this great line from the Gospel today that I hope rings in our ears for the rest of the week and the rest of our lives. Don't be afraid. Just have faith. That's what he says in the face of our deepest poverty, death. Don't be afraid. Just have faith. It's like he's saying, don't be afraid. Recognize in your poverty, in your weakness, in your limitation, that I am coming to you as a beggar. In everything that fails to satisfy you, I am here saying, I am what you miss in everything you love in everything that you think should satisfy you that doesn't. I am what you miss. I know you feel like a beggar. I am a beggar, asking for your heart, for your attention. Unite your poverty to mine while I save the world. Where are you for today? Where are you a beggar today? Don't be afraid. Just have faith.